Ragnar Lothbrok, Viking legend or historical figure? Historians debate to his actual existence, but Ragnar's name repeatedly shows up in some of the biggest turning points of Scandinavian history. He appears as a ruler, a raider, and if the following story is to be believed, a dragon slayer. As far as dragon myths go, one of the more obscure revolves around Ragnar Lothbrok. Before we begin, let's just take a little moment to talk about Viking names. Surnames were, and still are, an important piece of information when trying to identify someone. In Western cultures today, we usually have a familial name, which we pass down to our children and have inherited from our parents. However, during the times in which these men of the North pillaged and raided Europe, Surnames were not inherited, they were chosen. Viking surnames were uniquely obtained based on the traits and appearances of the person they applied to. This basically means that fathers would have different surnames to their sons and grandsons. At the time, it would be quite common to come across another man named Ragnar in the 10th century Denmark. To make a person more easily identifiable in a group, Names would be given to people along the lines of Forkbeard or Bloodaxe or anything else to make them stand apart. One common solution to the surname problem was to name someone based on the name of their father. As an example, the son of Ragnar Lothbrok, Bjorn Ironside, had a son named Eric Bjornsson. This trait can still be seen in many modern day Scandinavian surnames. But what about Lothbrok? Where did that come from? The little information we have about Ragnar was that he was likely the son of a king named Sigurd. So why wasn't he named Sigurdsson? Lothbrok, quite hilariously, means shaggy breeches or fuzzy pants. The name refers to the key plot point of one of his adventures, which we'll go over now. Harad, the king of the Swedes, goes hunting in the wooded areas of his land. On his hunt, he happens to come across two young snakes. The king inexplicably decides to take the snakes home with him as a gift for his daughter, Thora. He tells his daughter to protect the snakes, to feed them, and raise them as best she can. Thora rears them well and they grow speedily in her care to maturity. The snakes are given an entire ox to eat every day. Eventually, the snakes begin to cause havoc to the surrounding areas of King Harad's land. Thora has raised them so well that they have grown to enormity. The snakes break free of their bonds and besiege the land with their terrible, poisonous breath. King Harad decrees that any man who is able to take care of this problem for him are permitted to marry his beautiful daughter. This statement, unsurprisingly, draws in men from many lands, attracted by their desire for the king's daughter or for the fame their victory will bring them. Ragnar had just divorced his wife Ligurtha. He hasn't trusted her for a while, especially after she set deadly beasts on him. He hears of the challenge of the two serpents from travelers and passers-by and is intrigued to try his luck. Ragnar is aware of the traits and of the abilities of the gigantic snakes, and seeks assistance from his nurse to help him prepare for the challenge. He instructs his nurse to provide him with thick wool, tar, and sand to pad his breeches. Ragnar jumps into some icy water whilst covered in his cladding. He climbs out and then waits for his clothes to freeze in the wintry air, turning them into a kind of makeshift fuzzy armor. Ragnar straps his spear to his hand and with the king and the king's courtiers in tow, heads out to meet the giant serpents. One of the snakes approaches him, and then the other shortly behind the first. They spew their poisonous breath at Ragnar and move him for the kill. The king flees out of cowardice, and his courtiers scream in fear, but Ragnar is unmoved. The snakes strike at Ragnar's legs, and his icy, fuzzy armor protects him. With one arm, he bats the snakes around, and with the other firmly strapped to his spear, he impales them both in their hearts. The king returns to Ragnar. He is overjoyed and is merrily laughing at Ragnar's unconventional appearance. He names Ragnar as Ragnar Lothbrok in honor of his ridiculous attire. Ragnar then marries Thora, the prize of his efforts. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing up until now. It really means a lot to us. If you're new to us, why not check out some of our other videos linked right here. I'm Steel Sash, and I'll see you in the next episode. Toodles!